Right, guys. Um, this is a tutorial that uh, many of you have requested uh, since I don't know, like the beginning of the pandemic, more than two years ago, uh, when I did the implementation of reaction diffusion in Grasshopper. It was a Python code that was kind of kind of buggy. It was slow. Probably the one that we're going to see today is uh, as slow as this one. Um, there also will be a Spanish version soon um, for for the digital features uh, workshop of this year. Uh, so I'm going to show you first a little bit of like the theory about what this reaction diffusion is about. Um, so uh, basically, we're gonna we're, I will explain um, which uh, basically reaction are we are we doing? Is it will be the the Grace Code implementation, one of the most typical ones. So basically what is reaction diffusion is a mathematical model for of a theorized mechanism for biological pattern formation. So probably I mean you have seen this if you're here it's because you already uh, are interested in many ways of like simulating or generating geometries that are uh, like um, very like organic. So for example like coral patterns, bacteria, worms or all these things that probably you have seen in the work of many people such as I don't know like nervous system being one of the most famous uh, um, design studios that were with with reaction diffusion um, uh, these are patterns that are present for example in, in 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 many of the new balance shoes for example and some uh, basically it's like a very like a fa very famous technique to make like really uh, interesting patterns right so uh, the way that we can do this, or uh, uh, there's a lot of like theory and research about this, um, is by this uh, using this mathematical model uh, to simulate this pattern formation, right? Um, there are like books, for example, from Alan Turing, or many implementations that deal with this, and 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 they came up with this uh, discrete and very interesting model that we can apply, for example to over surfaces or geometries to create interesting things. So basically the reaction diffusion uh, has two uh, main principles and you can find uh, a little bit of explanation in the same diagrams that I borrowed from the page, the website from carlsims.com. Uh, um, where basically first we have a reaction where two chemicals A and B or usually you will see it as U and UV uh, or U and V um, sorry, uh, interact uh, and react given different concentrations, right? So basically, uh, given a chemical A uh, that is added in this environment at a, at a, at a given feed rate, uh, uh, after you, you, you feed it at a, at a, at a, at a, at a given feed rate, uh, this reacts, for example, when two Vs convert into uh, an A into a V, right? As if B reproduces using A as, as food, right? So in the presence of, of two, let's say, like molecules of B uh, next to an A, that will be A will be the food for B to actually reproduce, right? So also the chemical B is removed at a at a given kill rate. So basically, you this this uh, simulation understands this as a as a as some sort of like equilibrium or balance between these two. Um, uh, chemicals reacting, right? And the other part is the diffusion, right? Where both chemicals diffuse so an even concentration is spread out across the grid about this environment that we are going to simulate as a grid, uh, but A diffuses faster than, than B, right? So th that's, the, that's the idea, right? Uh, so the system, basically, to simulate this and again, to generate different patterns as coral patterns, bacteria patterns, like fingerprints, and so on and so forth. Um, basically, we, we, we simulate it by using an approximate, uh, basically, or the system is approximated when we use uh, two numbers at each grid cell for the local concentrations of A and B. And these particles basically are not particularly uh, individually simulated. So imagine that we have a grid of thousands of cells that we are simulating uh, uh, because of this interaction between the two chemicals about these principles of their reactions and how they basically like diffuse over time 
large scale patterns can emerge right so basically the way that this happens right is is by finding the right equations that will calculate on this grid the the how these two chemicals will will behave right so more or less the explanation from the carl sims website is is about this basically we have uh this new values that are calculated over the previous values of the grid so imagine that this is a grid that is being calculated over time and is recalculated at every frame or every step of the simulation just as we can see here in this in this video right uh given like a, a specific diffusion rates that we're going to see how basically like changing this diffusion rates or or uh, are not concentrations usually people talk about concentration but our diffusion rates um are calculated using the the 2d laplacian functions which give the difference right uh between the average of nearby grid cells and and the current cell so this simulates the diffusion because a and b become more like their neighbors so we will see that there is in a specific part of this calculation that has to do with the with the uh, neighbor condition of each cell at, at the grid um, uh, and part of, 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 of the parameters of these equation, equations are for example like the feed rate uh, right how do you feed one component right into this the simulation the delta is the, the change in, in time for each iteration uh, the kill is uh, subtracted to remove B the, the, the second component um and the reactions basically is that the chance that one and two b will become together as a times b b is converted and a is converted to b right how this is explained we will we will see that happening in a minute so these two principles are very important so imagine right diffusion that is a passive spreading or, or averaging process so imagine like ha uh, trying to simulate how for example like ink or drops of ink uh, fall into water right uh, that is a process of diffusion that is like very comp uh, it, it's a very complex process to simulate or, or to actually like represent right and 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 we think of it uh, again as as for example or, or as heat evens out in in a room so more rigorously we can describe it as as the motion and mass of particles moving randomly in a fluid where randomly right for for the purposes of this simulation means that the movement of a particle is independent of its previous state at any point in time uh so for example if if we compare this to like newtonian particles whose movement is dominated by forces and inertia so we are not concerned about the movement of in, of an individual particle but we are uh, concerned uh with the aggregate motion of of all the particles right so this is why we need to compute this idea of like neighbor conditions so mathematically uh the way uh, to to do this is using partial differential equations um that will describe the dynamics of continuous uh, quantities through space so this will give us a relation between how quantities change relative to their neighborhood right um so so for that we will use the laplace equation so this is something like very complicated um it, it takes a while to actually understand it again i'm revisiting code that i had for like more than 10 years um that you can find also like in in in, in a lot of places but basically the, the the this equation states that the change of some quant some quantity equals the Laplacian, basically the triangle square symbol of the quantity. So the Laplacian refers to the sum of the second derivatives in each dimension. So we need to basically like uh, came up with, with those uh, where the second derivative can be interpreted as, as the curvature, right? As curvature. So what this basically means is if uh, or says is that if the current position is more through sh is, is more sh like shaped, uh, it increase and if the current position is more crest shape it decrease right so other way of saying this is that the concentration goes or moves forward the surrounding concentration 
and over time in a closed system it averages out the, the concentration it's it's a little bit too to like hard to understand uh, basically in, in, in like by looking at the formulas right so because of because of also computer works with like in discrete quantities right like 0 to 1 uh, so we need to we need to convert like this um, uh, we need to 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 use these differential equations we need to convert them to regular equations of discrete quantities right so we must create discrete versions of both space and time and there are several ways to to uh, several ways to do this um, and one of the, the the simplest one is called finite differences and finite differences is basically this idea of what you see here in this diagram um, where basically we we divide the space into a regular grid of points um, each point containing some concentration right a or v uh, or b so now we define a discrete version of differential operators based on a point and and the neighbors so we can derive um, all of this in several ways um, being the the simplest way as, as some books explain being the the Taylor expansion so this will give us a, a, a stencil basically like five point stencil or discretization um, that we can apply at each to each point of our grid to compute the Laplacian right so this five point stencil show shown in the in this diagram for example is the simplest version of, of a di discrete Laplacian and we apply the stencil by multiplying each value by its corresponding local grid point and summing them together right this is what you see here uh, here below um, in matrix syntax this process is sometimes called convolution and probably if you have heard you have seen other uh, of, of my videos uh, about uh, convolution neural networks because basically you're sweeping over right so this is uh, basically the same the same idea uh, and also there's this part that is the implicit integration where basically everything happens so having the right part of the of basically having one part that is the the, the one side of the Laplacian equation um, we find that we need to deal with the other part with the left part of the equation right so there are several methods or solvers for integrating um, systems in time to do this actual integration so uh, we can for example um, or, or one of the, the, the simplest way of, of doing this is using the Euler uh, the forward Euler um, uh, or, or explicit basically integration uh, and this is based directly on the definition of, of the derivative that we see here so and again because we're working with computers we cannot work with continuous numbers but basically we work based on zeros and ones so instead of of, of the this limit of, of h right the h parameter going to zero we take uh, h equal to some very small value that we can call in this case like delta t uh, so to compute the value at the next time step we take the current time step and then we add the derivative at the current time step multiply by our uh, time step for to, so for a 2d diffusion we get something like this like this equation that we see here and again the the, uh, the that's that's uh, in relation to the diffusion part right so the other component of rd systems is the reaction and and this is basically like encoded as an ordinary uh, differential equation which is specified uh, uh, specifying uh, uh, um, uh, a rate of change for a concentration again this doesn't depend on on, on space making it uh, somewhat simpler to simulate than the diffusion component and again there are many possible reaction equations right uh, which uh, um, some people research about because uh, again there are many equations that we can that we can use to simulate a reaction uh, some are based on real or or even like hypothetical chemical reactions uh, any uh, as you can see here on, on this video that this is from the simulation of Carl Sims that he has a, a very interesting uh, web simulation that is amazing like mesmerizing 
Uh, so some some of these are based on real or again or hypothetical, and um, each of these sets of equation has basically they work based on on two chemicals reacting, right? This is common. This is very common for reaction and diffusion systems. Um, so we can see that there are, for example, one of the uh, most famous one is the Grace cut that we're going to implement. Uh, you have others like Russellator or Fitzhugh Nagumo or Girer Mainhart or the ones that Turing um, uh, proposed like uh, decades ago or others that are for example like uh, another like really famous is the velusov sapotinsky uh, reaction. Uh, so this is very interesting because in this way uh, basically we can explore also like different ways of actually uh, generating this this um, these things. So after this like brief explanation, uh, what we're going to do, we're going to work, or we, we will work uh, implementing this for Rhino, for Grasshopper, but we're trying to take the computation of this outside Grasshopper, um, outside Rhino, because we know that it's kind of slow, there are many ways to implement this, you can implement like, for example, like parallel computation to do stuff, but those are like probably more complicated. Uh, this is good because we're going to use we will use something that is called Colab, that is a platform for for coding online. Uh, basically, we're using the computation power of Google servers. So if you have a, a, a Google account, like a Gmail, for example, you can go to colab.research.google.com and you will basically log in and you will see something like this. This is basically like a virtual machine running on, on Linux. So... Uh, basically here you have the terminal like a linux terminal where you can uh, work on what is called or what are called python notebooks and basically the way that this works is by by using different cells probably if you have done or if you have followed some of my my tutorials on my on, on this channel uh you probably have seen me using this a lot because you can use uh, uh, a lot of gpu power uh, uh, or, or like, uh, basically a GPU power that you will you wouldn't normally have at your at your house. So in this case, we will use this to actually code and generate the files, generate the reactions that can we uh, then read inside uh, Rhino or Grasshopper and and generate geometry with those. And that actually that's pretty nice because if you don't have a powerful computer. Uh, usually like your computer struggles with generating like geometry or calculating stuff this is a very good solution this is why I'm doing this probably it's not the fastest uh, but again it's very useful for 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 a lot of people that they don't have like if you don't have like a good hardware to do it so um, we will start basically in your collab you're probably if, if if this is your first time using collab uh, you will realize that uh, my screen has like a dark mode. It's because I'm using Colab Pro. And Colab Pro, uh, based on a subscription that is like $10 per month, you can, hacks, you can access like uh, better GPUs. For example, if you are doing machine learning, or deep learning stuff where you require like GPU computing, uh, you can use it by paying that small fee and you get access to uh, way faster uh, GPUs, right? If you use the free version, you still have like most of the functionality, except that you you won't access uh, some special things, like for example, having like sessions more than twelve hours, or uh, again, using for example like a P100 GPU that is like very powerful. You will be stuck, for example, at like K80s that are uh, slower and older uh, uh, and older, basically. So, uh, the first thing is here, we're going to say that this is the uh, reaction diffusion, uh, Grace Scott, and here you have two ways of actually generating content. So, here, uh, let me show you again, you will have this by default. So, if you put your, your mouse, you hover your mouse on the top part of the, of the cell around the middle, you will see that you have two, two options to add a cell above, a text cell where you can add an explanation or a text, and the code cell where you can actually uh, code in Python. 
The same thing if you go to the to the lower part of the cell, you can add both. So here I'm just going to add, uh, sorry, a uh, text. So the first thing that we want to do, uh, so we will let me did I close it? This is the presentation. I think we went yeah before. Everything is fine. Uh, so we will do the gray Scott simulation. And for that, the first thing that we will we will do is like declare our imports, right? Because we're working in Python. You can implement actually the same code directly on Grasshopper. You have a powerful machine. You don't need this. Uh, you can just like copy paste this and but it will take some time. Uh, because Python is slow. If you want to do like a faster version, try to use C++ or like C Sharp or, or something that allows you to also have like GPU computing. In this case, we're going to do this. First, we're going to import NumPy as NP. NumPy is this library that will allow us to do like a lot of uh, mathematical uh, computation. I will be, I, I will not be like very explicit because probably you have seen explanations about NumPy in my other videos. But basically, we we can do matrix computation and and like a lot of stuff in a faster way that by just using like regular list in Python. Uh, we will also use uh, from SciPy dot sparse. Uh, sparse uh, import spdix because at some point we want to basically create our matrix it's a sparse matrix uh, you know with the with the diagonal in the middle to actually do the calculations because it's faster and more efficient from a memory perspective again another technicality that I won't I won't go in in, in this case uh, into a further explanation um we will use also uh um codex and json why because we we will um we will basically uh export the information basically like that that we will export two files with the two concentrations of each component that we are going to simulate as JSON files, and we want to use that to read inside um, Rhino and Grasshopper to generate our geometry. So we will use that. Uh, also, we will import time because it, it is important that uh, to know how long does it take to do the calculation. And finally, uh, here to see if our simulation or or basically like the patterns that we're generating are working. Uh, we will use also matplotlib, uh, matplotlib as plt. Remember that in Python, like n as np or as plt are ways of adding, like using an alias, so you write less code basically. Um, the second thing that we need to do, uh, we need to let's say this is step uh, two. Let's call this step one. And this is a step two. Uh, generate a folder to uh, save our results. There are many ways also to do this. I will just create this folder and save directly and then just like manually download this. There are ways that you can basically uh, save directly to your to your Google Drive, so you save those files. Again, this was covered in other videos. I'm, I'm trying to keep this as short as possible, right? Uh, so to do that, uh, we use terminal command and to create a new directory. And to do that, we, we use exclamation mark and we say like mkdir make directory. And we'll do it in content. Sorry, uh, we'll do it in uh, content and results. That will be our our folder. So if we execute this cell, you see, it's like it has a check mark, no problems. If we execute this, not a problem. And you will see that 
here we have a new folder that is called results. So based on that, uh, we are ready to start implementing our uh, uh, grace code. So we can do step three. Um, here we are going to actually implement a solver class, right? Because um, called, uh, we can call it like a Ray Scott. So to implement the class, we need to actually create the class. So the class will be, let's call it just like GS for the sake of simplicity. And we need to, uh, and again, this is Uh, solver class let's call it like in another way so let's implement a class to solve the gray Scott um, RD equation so again, this is the class. Uh, we need to specify our constructor. Not with that. Uh, so our constructor will take uh, two parameters, of course, like the self, like the class itself, uh, the object itself, but also a file name. We'll call this f name. Um, so we will write our uh, the constructor where n will be the resolution of our grid right so more or less like over 200 like 256 uh, points of resolution for our grid in both dimensions is a square grid it's it's good enough if you go to 512 basically you need to wait longer uh, we will see we will see how long does it take so self that you we will call our components um, one component will be U, even though I talk about A. I mean, if you want it, you can call it A, but we'll call it like U because this is how basically it's like implemented everywhere. Uh, we will do this as NP, NPy once, like one type, like basically with one value, this will create a grid with um, of N, N, uh, comma N resolution. It's a, byte, it's, it's a matrix basically. And this is very important. Basically, the the type uh, for the floating uh, for um, the data type will be NP float sixty four. Uh, this is super important because if we want to save this as as JSON, usually you will see if if you find other, for example, algorithms or or, or code for this in Python. Um, you will get like the precision of like 128 bits, but that basically it, 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 it will give you errors if you try to export it to, to JSON. So, uh, let's just copy this here and this will be the parameter B and we will say that these are zeros and here we will need to add our parameter for the name. Uh, F name. Perfect. So now we need to add uh, a couple of um, of things. So a couple of definitions. One that basically uh, convert everything to a matrix. We can call it like matrix. Um, we need to create another. Uh, function that creates the Laplace equation. We will deal with the the arguments that we're passing uh, later. So let's just, for the sake of code, just add this um, we need to also um, code the A function that will initialize our 
our initial condition basically. We will write those equations. We need a definition. And this is the more important one. This, this is where, where the magic happens. Uh, the integration. We talk, I talk about that at the, at the beginning of this video. Uh, we'll call it like integrate or integration. Whatever you want to call it. And that is the longest part. And this is optional. I mean, if you're implementing this on directly on a Grasshopper uh, capsule or node, uh, you this won't work. But basically, here we want to visualize uh, what is going on. So we will call this plot. And as the name says, it like basically it's like to plot the results that we that we want. So let's let's see how how we continue with this. So basically this is the class, these are all the definitions that we need to, or the methods that we need to implement. So actually now that I think about it, we don't need this method probably, so... Um, yeah, we'll just, we will just stick to this four, or basically like the three, the three ones. We just need like a method that initializes the values, actually we will implement this at the beginning. Uh, and the Laplacian and the integration. So let's see how this goes. Um, we will set the initial condition. So here you can say like initial condition. And to do this, the parameters that we need is just a self. Uh, this is initial. Is this spell correctly? Sorry about my English. Is yeah, initializes spell correctly. Um, so again, remember the indentation is something very important in Python. Uh, we will say that uh, n and two and r are equal to self that n. Uh, int self n uh, divided by 2 and did I put one extra self that n sorry and 16 these are our initial um, our Initial parameters for this definition, we will say that self that u uh, will be equal to, we will add a little bit of concentration uh, to u will be like 0 0.02. You can try like different values, but I think this is something that is like you will find uh, almost like everywhere to implement this type of things. This is the value of the 0 0.02 uh, times random remember that i talk about like how basically like, uh, we need to set that uh, instead of going to zero because we're working with continuous values we need to specify like really low amount or better like a yeah a small amount um when we initialize the values so in this case is uh, np that random this will be like random values that random uh this will be n times n we will do the same thing with uh, the other component, and this will be the same. And here we will say that self that uh, u equals to sorry self that u uh, n two minus r let me check my notes because where I have this written uh, n2 plus r uh, comma n2 minus r uh, colon n2 basically it's the same n2 uh, 
plus r is equals to or is equal to uh, 0 0.5 and we will do the same for the b um, but this will be uh, n minus 2 divided by n2 perfect and this will be 0 0.25 we will see how this how this works. So basically, this will initialize our our class. We can test this. Um, so let's add just a code to to test this thing. Let's see if it works actually. Um, so yeah, it should work if we do this. So. Um, we will set n to let's say like 64 uh, and f name for now we'll just call it like blah whatever so we will say like our solver gs solver will be equal to uh, we call it gs and we need to pass n and f name and we will say like here print gs solver that initialize um that's right so if this worked we should see something it says like no none didn't do anything let me see well, it didn't throw like any error, so probably it will it will be. Mm -mm -mm. So just for the sake of of like uh, seeing if this is working, basically we're returning. Uh, if we execute this, right, we we will returning the the U and the V. Uh, chemicals and basically you see that this we are initializing with random values with this basically like two uh, nested array so basically it's a it's a it's a, it's a bi-dimensional like matrix numpy array with those values so that works so we will just erase this that is like working okay because we just need that function to initialize this this is a little bit more complicated in this case they imp implementing the 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 Laplacian again. I'm not a math guy. I just understand enough to implement this. So, so we will say that n is equal to self. That n we need to of course pass the self here. Uh, we'll say that the parameter e uh, will be equals to n pi that once uh, n squared. Uh, e2. These are the parameters of the of the Laplacian. So again, I just know enough to implement this. So bear with me with the code. Um, uh, it's uh, if I remember correctly, this is one times n. This is plus or minus. This is minus one plus. I'm really bad at math. I have to be honest. So for me, this is a actually uh, I struggle a lot with this kind of things. Um, and the parameter e3 of our Laplacian will be equal to uh, zero times no, this will be zero plus um, one uh, times uh, n minus 1 uh, times n n and basically a because basically what we're creating here we're creating the equations but we're also we're creating this this sparse matrix so this is why like a um, this will uh, be diox 
so remember when we talk about this stencil, basically we're implementing that. Uh, we're implementing this this neighboring condition, this cross that I showed you before. That is actually we're implementing this, right? Because basically this will the, we will use a sparse matrix to solve this. So actually, let me put it here. Um, we will build a sparse matrix uh, that applies the five point stencil. See first part of video. Um, so we're getting those uh, neighboring conditions. So we will say that this is uh, minus four times e comma e two comma e three comma e uh, e e um, comma this will be zero comma minus one comma one comma minus n um, comma n and here we'll say like n square comma n square so the way that you will implement this if you go to for example scikit learn um, or scipy, sorry, scipy sp dix. Uh, basically, this is the sparse uh, diagonal matrix. Here you see how basically you need to you need to build it, right? Here it says like how will you basically this will return again a sparse matrix from from diagonals uh, value. So it here gives you an example given like the and numpy array how to how to build it. Uh, so yeah, always like check, for example, like the API. So you see how this is, how everything is working. Um, with that, actually we can, uh, also, I mean, that, that's, that's our Laplacian. So what we can do here, um, we can execute this. We don't have any, any like, uh, syntax error. So instead of using initialize, um, we can uh, say Laplacian. And you see this is generating basically our, our, our matrix. And our matrix will be basically a matrix like full of ones, right? Um, so let's do one thing here print a dot shape it's a matrix of of in this case like uh, 4096 by 4000 of 96 and basically it's a matrix that it will look like full of ones with a with a big diagonal from the top left to the uh, lower right uh, full of uh, in this case like minus 4 as as the value and it's a way of like efficiently like solving this I guess apparently for for what I heard uh, so um, we will just delete this we don't need to print this we don't need to return anything here because we just need to create a um, finally we need to implement the integration and this is um, here we need to integrate using uh, Euler method or basically like uh, use finite um, remember that I explained like here we're doing the, the finite sorry the explicit integration uh, Euler method um, let's comment that and 
we will use we will say that you uh, it will be like self that you that reshape n times n because we need to express this as a as a um, again as a matrix so we are reshaping this uh, this um, sorry this is n times n we need to basically like flatten this right so this is why we're reshaping this matrix into like a flatten array to calculate everything and then we will uh, if I remember correctly yeah then we reshape it back so basically on the array let me add this comment actually here for V, we will do the same. Uh, remember to, I mean, again, I'm a really bad coder. I'm always like copying, pasting, and that's not something that you're supposed to do because you're gonna mess it up at some point. So for I in range, we need to iterate over, over the values. So we'll say for I in range, um, int, and here we didn't implement this. We will we will implement it um, now. We need to uh, um, specify the number of steps or iterations. The iterations. So we will say that for the integration, we will need first uh, iterations. Um, that's the first parameter that we will that we will use um, and we will say like uvv will be equals to u times v times v um, here we will say that the parameter u will be updated um, using and here we need a couple of values because here uh, we need a couple of, of uh, we need to basically start implementing um, this equations uh, here. Um, so the way that we can express this is with that we can that we can implement this equation. That basically this is the Gray Scott. Uh, um, We can do this. Um, uh, we will say that u plus equals du. This will be the the. Um, the 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 rate uh, the change rate for for the component u so actually we need to pass this as a as, a, as an argument here du we will need also dv we will need also f the feed rate the the k and also we will need uh, l that will be the the Laplacian so these are the the parameters that that we will need again. The iterations, the 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 parameter for the first component, the first chemical, the second chemical, the feed rate at we're going to, uh, at, at the one that we're going to feed the first component, the kill rate um, again to to delete the sorry to to add the second component and to kill the first component again as I explained in the in the in the presentation here using the the diagrams from Carl Sims right so we need to again add let's say the food but at the same time we need to we need to kill some of the of the byproducts of those like, like of that reaction and to, to in order to keep like the balance or basically some some stability in the system so for that we need those those parameters so to actually implement the equation we'll need the the dot product 
of you. Uh, is this correct? I think this is correct. UVB plus um, F one minus U. Yeah, that's the 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 equations for U. The equation for B will be plus equals to pretty similar dv um, times the dot product of the dot the relation uh, plus uvb minus f plus k the feed plus the kill rate times b should be okay. Let me check. Uh, yeah, we're doing it inverted. It doesn't matter. It's the same thing that you see here. Um, yeah. So now that we have this, uh, what we can do. Yeah, that looks correct. So we can say now we can update the values. Self that u equals to u. Self that b equals to b. Sorry about that. Um, and now what we can do, we can reshape again. We can convert this flattened calculation into into a um, into a, a matrix form. Or shape again so we can say like you reshape um, n by n and mb is also b that reshape uh, n comma n uh, and basically this is I mean if we have this we are we are fine now. We are okay to actually implement the the plotting function. Uh, so just let's execute for now. We don't get any errors. Um, we can test our code right now. That, that uh, actually this is this is everything that we need to implement what we need. Um, so let's implement the last method. So basically, it's to vis visualize. The results, and basically we will say that uh, u is equal to self that u b equals to self that b. Um, f is equals to here we'll create the, the plot figure. Uh, figure fix size. Let's uh, uh, um, add a figure size. We can do like I don't know, 25, 10. I think that will be enough. Uh, the dots per inch. The DPI will be let's say 400. Uh, face color uh, equals to uh, W and the edge color. Um, we can set it to actually none. If we don't ex specify it, actually, we're 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 fine with that. Um, we will add this like SBF that add. Uh, we will add a subplot. Uh, this will be our subplot, so basically we will we will put both um, component A and component B. So this is the main figure, and we will add subplot um, one to one. This is the position of our subplot. Uh, we will do plt that color. Uh, sorry, p color. 
Oh, it's been a while since I, I've done matplotlib. So we are almost done. So we need to specify again like the color. So for this, what we need to do is like say like u that reshape. We need to reshape the value of, of u as a matrix like n n. Then um, let me see in a parenthesis here. Uh, we need to indicate the, the, a color map. So here you can use like whatever. If you're familiar with the matplotlib, you can use like Viridis or you can use Plasma or others. You can create your custom ones. I'm not going to do that for now. And here we need to do the same thing. We need to add a an, an, another subplot for, for the other component. And that will be, uh, the position will be 1 to 2. We will plot, we will have both plots next to each other. Um, so we add another subplot. We set the position. Uh, here in this case we will use the, the value for V. The same. Um, the same way. Here I'm missing one thing. We need to say um, plt dot uh, axis. We need this parameter so everything is plot correctly. Uh, tight. Uh, not plr, plt. We will copy the same thing here. And finally, we will say uh, plt that show. That should be it. So if everything is 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 coded correctly, we should see our actual um, reaction diffusion. But first, let's uh, let's do a couple of things. So I will copy and paste here some configurations so we can use this so these are like typical patterns that you can find in books or even like in the in the carl sims website or others with information about different concentrations for our parameters so in this case we have reaction diffusion parameters if you want to create a, a bacteria pattern a another bacteria pattern uh, one is like more like mitosis type of things the other one is like dots and kind of like worms or bacteria coral fingerprint spirals again like the things that we saw here to create like this type of patterns you have some of the concentrations that you can find probably everywhere actually i have a list of those in one of my previous videos um from um again like two years these are the same parameters that i i use for that so we have here um the resolution uh iterations here we're not using uh, still the um, the file we need to implement actually the, the file but we I want to see if this is if this is working I want to keep this under an hour of tutorial so I have 20 more minutes to go and I want to include how to do this in, in, in actually grasshopper to build the geometry so let's let's go let's hurry up a little bit so we set the initial parameters Actually, I should put this here. Uh, initial parameters. So for the reaction diffusion, let's say we want to start with the typical one that is like the coral concentration. Still will be our parameter. So I uncomment this. And here we will say like the grid resolution. Here we will say like the steps or iterations. Again, we're not using this yet, but this is the file output file name. Uh, and I think that's that's it. So we create our solver object. To create, we just need to pass again the number, the the resolution, and the and the and the file name that we're not using. Uh, we will uh, here um, the Laplacian. So we will say like 
L for Laplacian will be equal to uh, GS solver um, dot Laplacian. Then we will uh, initialize the the grid. Set the initial condition actually. Uh, so for that we will use the GS solver um, dot initialize perfect and now what we can do actually we can do it here to see how long does it take to calculate everything we can say uh, st time will be equal to time that time this will be a start time and here we will say like print uh, elapse or execution time uh, will be equal to dun, 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 dun. Actually, let's do this. We can say um, s seconds. Yeah, we can turn this into an expression. Boom. And here we can say that boom. This will be equals to. Uh, yeah, it's better to create the expression actually. Time that time. Basically, it will be the time. Uh, after we're measuring the time after everything executes minus st time so this will give us like the how, how long does it take to actually execute all of the things that we're doing here uh, but now that we initialize the grid we can now uh, integrate so we can say like gs solver that integrate and for this we need to pass some some parameters so the first one remember what are the iterations the second one will be du dv f k and the Laplacian these are the parameters that we need to or, or the arguments that we need to pass here so with this we will we will actually uh, solve the equations integrate basically um, and after that uh, the last thing that we want to see is the GS solver that plot and that's it let's see if this works of course we have an error so doo -doo 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 -doo. it does not have attribute dot what did I do wrong here? Is my error with the with the non type? Has no attribute. Why this is not solving? This is returning this. Let me check my notes. Probably I have an error here. The integration u dot reshape and n v reshape for i in range and uh, basically the number of iterations or steps. Do 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 u v l dot u minus u v v plus oh here I'm missing that I guess that's my only error no I have another error so ta -ta -ta. is that my only error f plus k self u eel we are reshaping 
that should be it. Non type. For some reason, FK. Maybe have a problem here. I mean, we are returning the 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 location. So uh, L the sorry print before integrating. Let's see none. Oh, of course, because we're not returning anything. So ah. Of course, I'm not returning the, the, the result, like the, the product of, of the method. Now it should be okay. Yeah, now we're returning the load operation. Sorry, I, I erased that. So now you see it's calculating, and boom! We get our low resolution, but this is actually simulating. So what you can see here in pretty uh, plasma uh, things is the result of, of, of this solver running for 2000 iterations and in a grid like a very low resolution one so let's try a couple of things first let's get rid of the of printing the the Laplacian. let's try again with the coral but let's increase this to 128 and let's leave it to 3000 so um i guess this didn't print the uh, let me see if the printing is fine print da -da 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 -da. okay that should be okay so again let's execute that let's execute this this should show the images, so you see that now it's just like plotting the images. Fantastic! This took five seconds, so it's pretty fast. And you see that this is uh, these are not enough steps to calculate like the full grid. So you see this is 128, 128. So probably we need like twice the amount. So let's see. Let's run this for 6,000 iterations. So this increase increases in time. So, um, yeah, way better. So let's stay to let's stay with this. Now let's implement the the the. How are we going to save this? So the way that we want to do this, let's just implement it here. Probably the the the, the best way will be adding like another method just to save. Uh, the things that we want to save, but that's okay. Here, save to a file, so a JSON file. A JSON file is a JavaScript object notation file, so it's very good to, to basically like implement or basically like save like amounts of to save data. Um, first, we need to uh, convert. Uh, our matrices to a uh, to lists. So we will say list u equals to mu that to list. Then list v equals to mv to list. Um. Now what we can do, we can um, uh, we need to convert this. We need to convert this as a, to a dictionary. So convert this to a dictionary. So it's easier to actually deserialize the JSON file later in Grasshopper. So we can say dig data u. Uh, this will be equals to. Uh, we can use list comprehension here. We can say like I uh, to uh, sorry list 
uh, u at i for i in range. It's better and faster to do it with list comprehension instead of doing like other other stuff. Uh, I in range, sorry, zero until the the um, size of uh, sorry length. This will be list u zero. Uh, yeah, this is correct. So this will give us everything in a a again like the uh, in a json format so basically our keys for the dictionary remember that a dictionary basically is a key value and the actual value so this will be like zero one blah 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 until the 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 last value so it will be pretty easy to read in in uh grasshopper so we need to again say that this is list data b list b for i in range of list b perfect and now we need to write our json files so to do that we will say like json dot dump um big data u we will use codex that open um, file path. Oh, we need to specify our file paths actually. Um, uh, file paths. So the first one will be file path. Um, u and this will be equal to uh, content uh, results um, plus self that name plus u that json and this needs to be So basically, this will be the, the name of the first file. So if we call our file coral, the name will be coral u.json. So this will be for component u. This will be for component b. Uh, perfect. So now we can continue writing our our um, file writer. So this will be file path uh, u w because we are writing. The encoding will be like a typical one, like utf minus eight, just in case we have special characters, which uh, in this case we don't have. So we need to also specify our separators. Uh, in this case, those separators will be uh, equal to um, comma and colon. There you go. That's the right uh, way to write this. And sort keys equals to true. I'm missing a comma here. This why it's shouting at me. And finally, we will say like indent uh, four. So. Basically, this saves in JSON format. Um,
yeah and we don't need that parenthesis so we can copy this and we can do this so json uh, and here we will use the data v file pipe v and the same thing and that's it now if i run i need to execute again because we are we make changes to our class and if we execute this no such such file uh, da, 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 da. what am I missing here oh uh, this should be okay Uh, if we want to call this coral, um, actually the way that we can implement this is with a with a form. We can say um, boom, add param. Uh, we can say that this is type uh, string so you don't have to like to just like write here like coral and it will it will get you that that uh, or like worms so you see if you change it here it, it changes here uh, we can do the same for the other parameters uh, for the resolution but that's I will leave that up to you so I want to check why am I getting Content results. Okay, I will copy the path. I don't think this is correct. Oh, it, it is correct. Sorry. I made a mistake. I had a always check the path. So you see, it calculated this, and now it saved. What? I don't understand. Okay, now it's not giving me an error, but now it will. I did something wrong. Let's delete this file. Let's delete this file. Now if I go to result, I see the, the file. So if I double click here, you see that each, I think these are columns. No, these are, uh, these are rows. So each row is a list. It's a list. So this is the key and this is a list with, in this case, 128 values. Then the second row, so I have, uh, rows with 128 values and, and columns and basically like it, yeah each each row has 128 values so this is a 128 by 128 so while I calculate something a little bit more uh, complicated let's say 16 no let's do 15 iterations 15,000 I will just download one of these files we can we can download both but Let's just download this. Downloads. Perfect. And let's open Grasshopper and finish this. I'm one hour. It will take five minutes. So before implementing this, let's just calculate. Let's leave this calculating with more resolution. But I'm going to go to Grasshopper. I have this already implemented, but this is again like spaghetti code. So I, I will try to make it... Uh, uh, better so you can so you can see so one thing that I want to do so now you can see my actually my my rhino my grasshopper so let's just do something very simple let's just create a flat surface planner surface it will work with anything I will just do a planner surface so here um, 
I will just explain. We can organize it now. So what I'm doing here, I just have a surface, setting one surface, um, and you see that now this is working. This is implementing a pattern that I had pre-calculated. So this surface has a specific resolution. So let me just hide this, preview off. What I'm doing, I'm just dividing a surface by the resolution that I'm using. So the last one that, that I used was 128 pretty low resolution. So this will divide the surface in 128 by 128 points. It should have been squared, I know. Okay, let's make it kind of square-ish. Um, so after that, we're doing a couple of things here. We are on the on on reading the the um, to read the JSON file. So basically we have a file path that needs to point to our file that we just downloaded. So in this case it's worms, json, blah, blah, blah. And to deserialize this, you can write your own JSON deserializer, but in this case I'm using JSON. The JSON is a plugin that you can find on um, Food for Rhino, it's from Andrew Human, but you can easily like read JSON files. So as you can see here, immediately, immediately I mean we have all of our keys that it doesn't matter uh, but what we care about here is getting the value so we get the lists of this JSON file the only problem with this is that this are basically this is a big string so we need to clean the string by deleting the by basically like a split by removing the, the square brackets and splitting all the values uh, by commas. So to do that, we use the text split that takes each of the strings, like long strings, and we're using as separators, as you can see, the open square bracket, the comma, and the close square uh, and the closing square bracket. And the results of this are lists that have uh, the first value as an empty but then separated values for 100 and, and in this case 128 numbers so let's go a little bit down a little bit more so Damn it. Just stay at the end of the list. There you go. So we have from uh, 1 to 128 all those values. So we need to perform one more operation. So in this case, um, we want to create a domain that starts from 1 to 128 to the resolution of our file. And we will get a sub list, and that sub list basically will remove. It will just take the chunk of data from the first value, so so the second position, the second index, till the the not the last one, but previous to the last one. Uh, so in that case, we will end up with um, 127, 128 values from zero to 128, and voila, that's the only thing that we need we can play we can use those values we can multiply it by some some number to do a couple of interesting things so um then we can check that part so let's now that we have the data so basically we have 128 list with 128 data points so we can perform the same operation to filter uh because this is producing 129 um, points, so we need 128. So again, we can get a sub list. Uh, I'm doing this. Someone will say like, uh, "Why are you doing this? You can just like have a separate slider for for this and for that." No, I just want to change the value one time. So this is why I'm just removing. Um, I am doing the same operation 
this I'm using the same domain here actually I should put this in the middle I'm using the same domain to get 128 points that I will map uh, in this case I will remove this because I'm not or I will move it because you can also use an attractor to change the 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 way that the um, the pattern emerges on a surface I'm not going to do that now um, so the simplest way of doing this is just um, taking the normals of your surface because uh, basically what we want to do is to move those points according to the values that we got from our simulation so to do that so we're now applying this on a flat surface and of course if we apply this on a flat surface we just need the vertical component to move the points vertical but what happens if we want to map this on a sphere or in another mesh right on another like shape that is not planar so this is why this is a good way of doing it we get all the the we get the points and the normals we get the 128 normals and we use that information, that vector, that unit vector that basically has length of one, and we will amplify it by the 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 values multiplied by some uh, scalar. Like here is twelve, or it could be like whatever you want. So that will give us 128 vectors per, or basically 128 by 128 vectors that we can use to. Here I'm simplifying our tree because. You see that the data structure here became a little bit uh, messy, so we simplified the tree, so we have everything at, everything at the same level of the of the data structure. So we get all the points, and we get all these amplified vectors. Let me turn this off, so you can see that those are moving according to the pattern that we just got from our collab. Boom! Magic. So once we have this, uh, it's as simple as, for example, using a uh, surface from point reconstruction. So you see like everything is like super quick to do. So if you don't know how to use this component, basically you need uh, the resolution. In this case, the U count. And the U count, uh, we will use an expression. Always is basically like the the resolution plus one otherwise it would give you an error it will say that you don't have enough points feed the points that we're moving in this case I'm flattening the the points and you can bake this and voila you have the surface and it looks pretty good um, the the good thing about this is that you can just play with this value so you're not recalculating but basically you're amplifying this vector and again, the, the good thing about using this method, you're calculating a very like complex surface, of course. But when you now you're just concerned about adjusting the value. So this is why you can add, for example, like a point, like an attractor. Probably this won't work now, but uh, let's just try. Um, so you can modulate based on these values, for example, a new um, so I can just use as amplitude that so you see yeah it didn't work probably I need to just like uh, work with other um, values here maybe less yeah maybe a smaller value yeah I think this will this will work so now I'm using an attractor you can use multiple attractors so our surface from points You see, when you, when you have the point here, we have the point here. So this is like you mitigate the effect of the of the of the of the bump. Let's say, right? If you move this, so let's say I want to have this 
close to middle, you see our pattern is changing a little bit. So let's increase this value a little bit. Actually, let's just decrease it. Yeah, I'm just adding one. Yeah, that that you can see that the, the where the point goes, the pattern gets softer. So you can play and modulate that. That's fine. The last step that I'm that I'm I wanted to show you, and we'll wrap this up, is that of course you can also color your mesh. So if you get from the values that you're getting, uh, I will return this to the original one, not the the one using the the attractor so let me change that um, so once you get those uh, those values amplified by again by a number uh, we can get the domain to get the maximum and the minimum value so basically you get a source domain and you can remap this from 0 to 255 and you can use those values as a or, or this domain as a target domain and you can input this to your to your to a gradient component and with that gradient component you can use this to to build a colored mesh that shows you in a better way I mean you can use like any gradient that you want actually something that is like this so it will show you um, yeah how the reaction diffusion happens and finally uh, you can, of course, use a Cadmill Clark subdivision uh, node from Weaverbird uh, so you can get a better resolution mesh. So, in this case, we're not, and this is faster to, than calculating a surface. So, I totally recommend uh, um, using meshes instead of this. So, let's see how we did with our simulation. So, look at this. With a better resolution, 256 and 15,000, we get a very nice pattern. So let's just download this. Download. Um, we will just rewrite it. No, it didn't rewrite it. So let's go back to uh, here. And just in case, I will disable the solver. 256 the resolution, the file path will be that new file, enable the solver again, this will take a little bit longer but you see, boom, as simple as that. Let's just bake this, that's beautiful, and again, the beauty of this is that I can model uh, any surface. Let's say I want to go, I want to do something like this and extrude this and let me move this to the center and I can say, for example, uh, twist make like a funky shape like the one that you're seeing now this is my shape and I can use this now as my input surface and voila I have my mesh it looks pretty good probably I need more resolution but that I will leave that to you This looks pretty, pretty, pretty good to me. We can apply an, an EMAP and see this in a render view. It looks fantastic. So again, you can load the, the U component file or the V component file and it will be amazing. It works. Play with it. Let me know in the comments if finally this is what you wanted. I know. 
I've been like, avoiding this for I didn't have the time for more than two years. So now it's it's done. Uh, a Spanish version is coming um, also because this is material for for the Digital Futures uh, 2022 uh, workshop. So thank you very much, and I'll see you next time.